Where do we where did we stop last week? Great discussion, y'all. Great discussion. I'm sorry, Sister Day. All right, Romans. So, Sister Dave, if you're there, how about if you read verse 25? You're not there? Okay. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. So when, again, when we're looking at verse 25 here through 27, God will fulfill his promises to Israel. Now, we talked the other week about God being the greatest promise keeper ever. God always upholds his end of the agreement. Sister Dave, what I learned in business law is this. When somebody breaches their side of the contract, there can be uh, some things that can happen. Israel always breached their side of the agreement. God always withheld or held up his part of whatever covenant. Now, don't y'all get so grand, like I always like to say, we want to point the, the, the finger at the Israelites. We are just as guilty. There have been things that God has done for us and he's kept his promises. We have not kept our promise to him. Even though a partial hardening, I believe you read that, sister, is come upon them in verse 25. Think about this. When we don't do or live up to our end of the contract, God can harden your heart. If you don't believe me, ask Pharaoh. He didn't tell Moses that he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart. They will experience future salvation. Aren't you glad that God does not totally write you off? That's a term Dick I learned in business school. Sometimes Companies write off bad debt. They write it off the books. Aren't you glad that the redemptive work of Jesus Christ has not totally written you off? Here's what I know about being written off. That means it doesn't exist anymore. Because he came, bled, and died on the cross for you and I, you are not written off. Because really what should happen on your ledger books means you should be dead or you should be in debt. He came and took away, Sister White, all of your debts and got you back in reconciliation with the Father. Think about that. Once the fullness of the Gentiles has come. Here, I said it I think last week. Because the Jewish nation would not do the right thing, Deke, would not accept him. We as Gentiles now have been engrafted and included in. We should be appreciative. But what she said was, don't get arrogant. Don't walk around thinking you more than a bag of chips. Don't think that just because you've been engrafted into the household of faith, you more than anybody else. He told them, don't be arrogant. I think that was one of the words you used, right? Don't be arrogant. And here, have y'all ever run into folks who think they got where they were all by themselves? Have y'all ever run into them folks? And sometimes, you know what I have to tell the kids at school? I say, hey, look, your last name is not Rockefeller or Kennedy, right? I have to tell them, but I also have to tell them, look, you can use this tool called education to give you an opportunity to sit at some tables that you would not normally get an opportunity to sit at. 
Some people get an opportunity to sit at tables because of the name that they have. But what she said is, don't be arrogant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. I believe in scripture and Proverbs, it talks about in chapter three, lean not to your own understanding. Again, ladies and gentlemen, that's where we get in trouble. When we lean to our own understanding. The scripture says, but in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him, not you. Acknowledge him. And this, the blindness she talked about in verse 25, in part, has happened to Israel. He came to his own. His own received him not. in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come. Again, I used an analogy last week. If a bag of $100,000 was sitting here, I left it here. And we all left out. And if they come in here on Friday to clean up the place, it's not stolen. Somebody just got a blessing. Why? Because I left it right here. The translation is because the Jewish nation, the Israelites did not accept, we as Gentiles have this awesome opportunity. Again, in verse 26, and so all Israel will be saved. Think about this. He does not totally cut you off. You're right. Thank you, Lord. All of this will happen during tumultuous, the tumultuous end times. When, excuse me. When Jesus returns as deliverer to eliminate all ungodliness. Think about that. Now, many of us, the church will already be gone. God always, we talked about this last week, he always has a remnant. There's a lot of folks not doing what he wants them to do, but he always has a remnant that he will save and that he will use. All Israel that survives this great tribulation will be saved. We said that in verse 11 and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, verse 26. It says, again, the deliverer will come out of Zion. Sounds like Jesus to me. Will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Who is Jacob? Do y'all know Jacob's name got changed? Here, again, another pastor, if I'm not mistaken, he said this was WrestleMania 1. As I see some young folks in here, I know some of y'all like it because I've been to some wrestling mat, uh, those, those things myself. But WrestleMania 1 happened. Jacob came in with his head high, thought he couldn't do no wrong. But when he had that encounter, he walked out limping. But here's what I also know. God had to sometimes change our names because he can't bless what we used to be and who we used to be. Jacob, when we think about the patriarchs, when they talk about the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Again, in verse 27, for this is my covenant. There we go again. God keeps his covenant. God keeps his promises even when we don't do what we're supposed to do. He is still going to save the nation because he made a covenant with them. But I am so glad that he was inclusive in his saving. Salvation is inclusive of all mankind who accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And listen at this, 
when I take away their sins. He still says, I'm going to take away the sin even when you have not kept your end of the bargain. Again, as I like to say, who would not serve a God like that? Who saves you in spite of you? Or again, when I use me, I've messed up since I've been saved. I know y'all all dropped out of heaven, so I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about me. Any questions or comments about those first three verses? It also talks about the awesome power of God, that he is willing to save us when we're fighting on the side of the enemy. Some of us are double agents. Think about that. Double agent, fighting on the side of the enemy. He went behind enemy lines to save you and me. And again, I don't know about you all. He would say all of us are worth it. Each and every one of us is worth it. And then I'll take it a step further. Anyone that has been placed in his hands cannot be plucked out. Think about that. There is nothing that can pluck you and me out of his hands. If David was here, he'd say it a little bit like this. He would rather be in God's hands than be given over to man or given over to nature because I believe really my translation is this. Even when I'm in God's hands, even when he's chastising me, he does it in love. Think about that. Again, how awesome he is in all his ways. Sister Day. One of the things that, um, that I think about when you're saying that is it amazes me how people will, would outright deny him, knowing who he is, knowing all that, but literally rejects him. I, I just can't imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also start thinking about, well, and I know there's somewhere in Scripture where it talks about where he would rather someone be, I don't know, on one side versus one that's lukewarm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the mm -hmm. terminology of the lukewarm thing. Yeah, Because yeah. he's like, you know, because he, he talks about spitting them out. Correct. But I'm thinking, I don't know what's worse, though. I mean... The lukewarm, I, I'm assuming, are the ones that know but don't do anything. But then you got the other ones that are just, right. yeah, maybe. It could be carnal Christians. Or, again, I believe that's in the book of Revelations, okay? Again, for God to use you, he basically, in that, my, my interpretation of that is, he would rather that you be, you don't know what to do with somebody who's lukewarm. You don't know how to take that kind of person, right? But again, you talk about denial. Peter was in his inner circle and deny him. But here's what I know. We talk about God not writing you off. He did not write Peter off even when he told Peter he would deny him. Think about that. Peter, in the inner circle, said, Lord, if somebody touch you, I'm going to cut them. Peter did that. Peter was a man of his word on that. Because they went to put their hands on the Lord, and what happened? He cut the man's ear off. But what did the Lord do? Picked up the man's ear, put it back on, and to use a legal term, there was no evidence. So the case had to be thrown out. But here's what I also know, Sister Dave, when we look at that example with Peter, Jesus is able to reinstate us or reconcile us because he's awesome, not because we are. Verse 28. You got it. But as far as the 
Stop right there. That was verse 28, right? The election is the selection of people through whom God would fulfill his kingdom purpose and program. It is not an election to individual. Think about it. Bless you. So when we're looking at verse 28, Israel's temporary situation during her time of spiritual hardening, again, we talked about that, concerning the election, for the perspective of God's eternal choice, Israel will always be his covenant people. Think about that. In the midst of everything they did not do right, God is true. They will always be his covenant people. He will always seek that covenant. He will always keep his part of the covenant for the sake of the fathers. Again, we talked about the patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the recipients of the Abrahamic covenant. God keeps his promises. God is still keeping his promise to Abraham. And that was made a long time ago. God has honored some of the prayers of your forefathers and foremothers. God will do exceedingly more abundantly in which we can even think or imagine. Think about this. Some blessings you and I have received because they were promised, God promised them back when you. A covenant relationship with a nation that has let him down numerous times. How many times have you let God down? Don't give me a number, that's a rhetorical question. Because if we are fair with ourselves, Deke, we have let him down so many times. And he is still willing to accept us back. If David was here, he'd tell you, purge me with hyssop. Lord, I want a clean heart. Why? So I can get back in right relationship with you. I can be in right fellowship with you, Lord. I've messed up. I believe that's anything. You have to admit that you have a problem. Many folks will walk around and still not admit they have a problem. We all have a sin problem. If we want to be fair with ourselves, and he came for our sin problem. Verse 29. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sister Dave, in law terms, what does irrevocable mean? I know what it means in business, but in a law term, what does that mean, Sister Dave? And you, it is, I'm not looking for a perfect answer. I'm just because you, you can't you, go back on your word. Oh, well, wait a minute. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God does not take back his promises or his gifts is what I'm trying to tell you all. He is not a man that he can lie. That's not in his nature. That's not who he is. So in spite of you, that's how he can bless you. Not because of you. He's blessing you because of who he is. My thing to each and every one of us is can we worship and can we serve God for who he is, not for what he does for you, although he does many great things for us. Let's not get that twisted. But they're irrevocable. They cannot be taken back. Verse 30. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up, wait a minute. You just said, for as you were once disobedient to God. Put yourself right there. 
Israel was disobedient. We need to put ourselves right there too. Disobedient to God, you have now obtained mercy through their disobedience. Wait a minute. We get engrafted in as Gentiles because of their disobedience? What kind of deal is that? Think about that. God will extend his grace to unbelieving Israel just as he did to the unbelieving Gentiles. I need somebody to go to Romans 5 and 8 real quick. Romans 5 and 8. Quick, quick. Once you got it, somebody read it loud. Again, while you're going to it, God will extend his grace to a unbelieving Israel just as he did to a un the unbelieving Gentiles. Go to Romans 5 and 8. One more time, sister. And I'm going to stop you in there, so hold your place. Stop. God commanded his love towards you and I while we were yet sinners. God made a conscious decision for you before you made one for him. Predestinated. Ordained. Christ died before the foundations of the world for you and I. Go ahead, sister. Christ died for us. Salvation, whether you are a Jew or from the Jewish nation or a Gentile, flows from God's mercy. I need somebody to go to 1 Timothy real quick. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 14. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, although I was formerly a blasphemer, hmm. a persecutor, hmm. and an insolent man, mm -hmm. but I obtained mercy because I did, not, I did it igno ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are Christ, which are in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Did y'all hear what Sister Dave just said? You know what I like to call that? Compare and contrast. Even on my best day, all I am is a filthy rag in his sight. Did you hear about how his love has commended, bless you, all those things in that compare and contrast. Everything that I'm not. Paul, again, was a chief injurer of the church, you all. But God changed him and changed his life. And here's what I know. When he changes your life, it will never be the same. Salvation, again, whether you be Jew or Gentile, flows through God's mercy. Did you hear that verse that she talked about? It is God's mercy that he shows towards you and I. My question to you and I would be this. If he met out the punishment that you and I deserve, could you stand it? Could you stand the punishment that you and I truly deserve? But grace and mercy. That's a pretty darn good combination. Grace and mercy. And he uses grace and mercy to help you and I. Even when we don't do right by him. I think there's this thing called agape love. He gives out agape love in spite of what comes back to him. Have you and I loved him like we're supposed to all the time? Don't answer that question. It's rhetorical in nature. Please don't answer it. Because if we are honest with ourselves, it's a resounding no. But he has always loved us the way he has said from the very beginning. 
In the 70s, we used to sing this song called Take Me Back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Can you remember what that relationship was like when it was just you were a babe in Christ? Can we get back to some of that where you're saying, Lord, I am going to spend quality time with you? Can we get to that point? I know we're so busy. Why? Because we have computers. We have cell phones. Who else got a tablet in here? We have all these things, right? At our disposal. And we're still too busy to spend time with the Lord. Hmm. Yeah, things that make you go, hmm, y'all got it, y'all got it. All right, where, where were you at? Which verse? Did you stop at 30? Okay, 31, please. Hmm. Stop right there. Stop right there. Think about this. Though not the author of sin, God allowed man to pursue his sinful inclinations so that he, he being God, could receive glory by demonstrating his grace and mercy to disobedient sinners. It's all about him being glorified. My thing is, can you see God showing you mercy, grace and mercy in spite of you messing up repeatedly? When people say he is a God of a second chance, I think he, they're wrong. Because if you, outside of these kids I see here tonight, if you got any age on you, he is more than a God of a second chance. If you took time to think about how much you've messed up, I won't even say since you were a kid, just go from the time you've been big enough to know yourself. But God demonstrates his grace and his mercy to disobedience. He's married to the backslider. He's married to the sin. He, think about that. What he does for us is awesome. You can't even explain how awesome he is and what he does for you and me. Real quick, I need somebody to go to Ephesians 2 and 2. Real quick. I know I'm, I'm getting over time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ephesians 2 and 2. Somebody read it when you got it. Oh, y'all, this is Bible study right here where you're going through some, some scripture. This is some stuff. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the son of disobedience. Hmm. Thank you. Sound like us? Think about that. But aren't you glad you're under new management? Aren't you glad you're under a new covenant that you don't have to be the old Jew anymore? Last scripture for the night. Somebody go to Ephesians 5 and 6. Last scripture for the night. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Hmm. One more time, Sister Day. Let no one deceive you with... Stop right there. Let nobody deceive you. What you don't want is to be in, in, in God's wrath. You don't want that. Yes, God is long-suffering. Yes, he's merciful. Yes, his kindness. Yes, all of that. Keep going, Sister Day. 
Let no one deceive you with empty words. Hmm. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Right. The wrath of God is coming. If you are out of the ark of safety, if you are not saved, purchased with his blood, and you do not, and you're not connected with him, you are going to suffer the wrath. Think about that. There are going to be many folks. Can you see them going through the recesses of their mind? Saying, man, I heard a lot of sermons, but I did not make a conscious decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. And now their soul will be eternally separated. That's a bad place to be. So somebody mark where we stop. What verse was that? Verse 30. All right, we'll pick up on 31. Lord willing, next week. Any questions about what we covered tonight? I thought we would get through the whole chapter, but I guess we didn't. And guess what? We're not going to rush. But I tell y'all what, I am looking forward to those first two verses in chapter 12. We might spend a good amount of time with those first two verses in chapter 12. Brother Tavin, is there anything online? All right. All right, any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Okay, yes, ma'am. We're going to pray for the young people because they are going to be on display here at True Light Christian on Sunday. It's going to be a worship experience on Christmas Day. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we're putting together the message now. Um, and... Uh, I'm feeling it. All right? I'm feeling it. Okay? Okay. Still are great. Number 32. I remember being in the 70s. They had the Ita Franco's Italian Band in Three River Stadium. See, Dick, I, I'm, I, I'm a historian too. All right? <laughs> I'm a historian. Okay? Anybody else? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to the end of a Bible study session. Lord, we thank you because of your grace and mercy. You have not cut us off. Lord, you have not written us off. Lord, even in our disobedience, we have to acknowledge we have done wrong by you we have to understand first of all all sin is first committed against you but lord in spite of us while we were on the enemy's side while we were yet still sinners you died on yonder's cross for us but lord you didn't just stay dead on resurrection sunday you got up with all power in your hands in heaven and earth and Lord, because you got up, folks have been getting up since that time. Lord, we thank you for sending your son because, again, Jesus, he is the reason for the season. Lord, always help us to keep Christ in our Christmas. Dear Father, we ask for a special blessing upon that sister who said, keep our family lifted in prayer. We acknowledge, Lord, we don't know those family members, but you do. Because you are all encompassing, you are all inclusive, and you're almighty because you're sovereign. We ask blessing upon that family. We ask blessings upon each and every family. Lord, we ask a blessing upon the family of Franco Harris. Be with them, Lord. Help them understand that there is no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Lord, we ask special blessing upon every prayer request that went up here tonight, uttered and unuttered. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon our youth. Many of them now are out of school until the new year. Lord God, be with them. Lead God and protect them and keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bless all of our senior saints. Lord, please be with them. Continue to lead God and protect them as only you can. Lord, bless those who have joined us online tonight. Lord, comfort them. Again, you, Lord, you will comfort the comfortless. You will be a mother for the motherless. You yes. are a father for the fatherless. Yes. Lord, as I like to say, you're Jehovah everything. Yes. 
Lord, as we get ready to leave this place, Lord, but never thy presence. Be with us. Your word said you would never leave us nor forsake us. For that we say thank you for being with us through our ceaseless ages. And Lord, when it's yours to call and ours to answer, meet us in a dying hour. Because we want to be there to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Come on up and enter into the master's joy. We praise you. We worship you for this awesome time that you've allowed us to have here in your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who are joining us online, again, we say Merry Christmas to you. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Good night.